Are you here already? Shalom, brothers and sisters. Check out this amazing word from our brother Chris Hilton up in far north Queensland. He went through the uh, Tableland newspaper all over far north Queensland, and thousands of people have read it. And we pray that it's affected lots of people. It's called Dead Words. Let me start first by reading this about salvation. Chris has written about salvation. Someone says, after 30 years plus of preaching and listening to sermons, if I hear another sermon or someone witnessing about salvation, I will just scream. This is how most Christians feel, and this is also how the general public feel. The word salvation has been bantered and played with so much that it is a despised word which has lost its usefulness to society. It has lost its saltiness and is a dead and buried word that no one wants to use. Christians don't go to Sunday services to discuss the scripture today. They go because they are lonely and want to make friends. Everything will be discussed except scripture. Did you know that there is nowhere in scripture that talks about Sunday services or the role of a C-H-U-R-C-H? doesn't mention that anywhere. You don't have to have it in your community. In fact, this whole scheme is a device created by men to control other men, to take their wealth and their happiness away from them. These C-H-U-R-C-H, circus, is the real word. Affiliates have no authority to set themselves up in this manner. They preach to us from a book called the B-I-B-L-E, which has been translated from the ancient Paleo-Hebrew scriptures into a pagan language, Greek. This loses much of the translation because of its inability to portray the sounds and meanings of the Hebrew words correctly. This book is again translated into two other languages before it reaches us, with many subtractions and additions, and that's against scripture as well, and it makes the change to the original become a device that men use to make laws and control most of our communities around this world. Today, the Hebrew scriptures are available in a translation called the Basura, straight from Hebrew into English, where many of the words have been transliterated so you can pronounce them correctly. You can check the difference in your favourite texts with the Besorah of Yahusha translation and be quite surprised. Scriptures does it too, ISR. Take, for instance, the word J-E-S-U-S. -S. Check this one out. This is a Greek word. And translated back to Hebrew, it becomes the horse. And in Latin, it means pig. This word is only about 500 years old, and there is no letter J in the Hebrew language. When the Messiah, Yahushua, was on earth, his ears never heard himself being called by that name. His name was, and will always be, Yahusha, the Messiah. Getting back to our original word, salvation, this is not the correct way of looking at the word. A much better understanding is deliverance. There are many versions and translations about what salvation really is. But upon investigation of these sources, you get that dead feeling that the word becomes factual, like the word bus. And it's only as meaningful as its description. It's not something that is life fulfilling. And this is how scripture should be affecting us, shouldn't it? Maybe if you are not having this love for his word, you would better look at whose name you have been immersed into and what spirit has entered your vessel. Is it the horse? J-E-S-U-S. You are certainly going to be kicked around if it's the horse. <laughs> scripture tells us that the heart of man is desperately wicked and evil above all things. So don't go saying, oh, he knows my heart. He understands. I'm calling what I want. He knows my heart. Yeah, he does know your heart. Wicked as sin. It's wicked as all. Get out. Wicked. Our hearts are wicked, brothers and sisters. So don't go using that excuse. I don't think Christians are told this by their pastors or priests 
But this is actually how the scripture describes our situation. Wicked. Sin is called lawlessness. And lawlessness is living in disobedience to scripture. Not the B-I-B-L-E. It's a mixture of all sorts of nonsense. We are also described as the walking dead and told that we have no life in us. We are actually in a dying and decaying state with no chance of receiving what we were created for, and that's eternal life. Remember, no matter what you have been told or what you might think, Scripture has the final say on all matters. So whatever you've been taught or whatever you might think, Scripture, Torah, has the final say on all matters, okay? So you might as well just open your heart and receive this, all right? The Scripture, or Torah, which means instruction, most definitely states that we were created to reach this goal. And this is the final say on this matter. So we are wicked. All our hearts are wicked but we have to overcome so that we can have the chance of receiving what we were created for, eternal life. Torah is all about love. Torah is all about love. Torah is all about love. And the words of it are all breathed, spirit breathed, in love. To us from our everlasting Heavenly Father and Creator, Yahuwah, there is a way for all mankind to be delivered from the reality of this disgusting, depraved and degrading circumstance we find ourselves in. Or aren't you in that situation? Well, I am. So most of us have been. So I guess you, know, you have to look at yourself, don't you? So we all have to... Uh, face the reality of our disgusting, depraved, and degraded situation we find ourselves in before the eyes of our Creator, you who are. And He can see through us, guys. He can see through you and me. There's no point having up a religious face. He can see through it. You who are owns everything and everyone. The world is His. No matter what you say or what you do, His Word tells us this truth for sure. If we open our eyes, we will see that He is making his generation aware of his presence, as he has always done throughout history. Disobedience to Yahuwah's loving instruction for our lives brings with it a curse, and that curse is judgment. If we look with a worldwide authority, take a global look. Continual disobedience must be judged. Torah says that the being that sins or breaks the Father's laws, it shall die. The way things are going in this world, I'm quite sure everyone is wondering when it is their turn. When's it my turn, they're all thinking. Yahuwah is very kind, though, and understanding of every one of our circumstances. But he wants us to understand the difference between what is lawless and what is not. So you won't have to wonder when it, when it will be your turn for disaster. You won't be living in guilt and have the Father's wrath on your head anymore. You will be delivered. <laughs> from this dreadful heart disease. Delivered from this dreadful heart disease. His blood will cleanse your heart and wipe away all of its past lawlessness and the curse that comes with it. How important is it to understand about your deliverance? How important is it to understand about your deliverance? then you can really know what salvation is. You will actually be delivered from the curse of death. Nobody wants to hear about the word salvation anymore. All the Christians are using it. Oh, we're saved. You come and be saved. It's just, it's just been watered down. It's a dead word. Nobody wants to know about it anymore. It's all over the TV early in the morning, I mean. Come and be saved. You know, that's not the right word. Delivered. Try and put that into your lingo, into your dialogue. Delivered. There's more power behind those words. It's a word that's alive because it comes straight through from the heap. It's a better meaning, guys. Just a second. I like this bit.
Okay, where was I? Other words that have been made like dead word and redundant words is the word mercy. What's that mean? It actually means favour. Use the word favour, it's better. Imagine receiving favour from your maker. It's like he has specifically chosen you, which is actually the case. It's much better than that dead, humiliating word, mercy. Oh, laborious and mercy. Oh, show us mercy, Father, back when we were in Christianity and all the slaving and labour we had to do. So, you know, you're coming into this word and using mercy. Just get rid of that word. Don't like that word. Yahushua comes to our hearts and knocks on its door and offers to come in and fix everything up. He gives us understanding of all our sorrows and hurts and to make our hearts new and alive and banish all wickedness from us. We have to get the, the wickedness out of us. I mean, what an offer. Fancy being given such favour. This is an overwhelming subject when you look at it, eh? But through the eyes of a priest, it seems endless. Another word, faith. Oh my goodness, faith. The correct word is belief. And it's something you can sink your teeth into, your belief. It's not too hard to understand. It is something you can experiment with and perfect. It's not an endless cosmic dirge. Your faith, your faith is never strong enough, is it? Your faith, your faith, your faith. Oh, faith. Get rid of that word. These are just a few things that I have wanted to share with everyone. I do hope and pray that it will get you going to do a little research of your own. I pray that it will lead you to know more about the boundless love of our wonderful Father in Heaven. All my love, Chris Hilton. Brothers and sisters, what do you think? Dead words. Let's, let's try and get those out of our vocabulary, eh? Let's take on the alive words. There's a book we read years ago called Come Out of Her, My People by Chris Costa. It has all those words in it. That's when we first heard about a lot of the words. Faith and grace and mercy and all these dead words. Get rid of them all. Use words that have meaning. People understand. Belief, favour, esteem. You know? Wonderful. What about the fact that Torah is all about love? What about that? You will know my people for the love they have for one another. Are they cutting one another down? Or are they lifting one another up and loving? That's how you know. So brothers and sisters, it's time to get back on the bandwagon. Keep studying and keep moving forward. Stop looking from side to side at fellow believers. Stop looking backwards. Don't go that way. Go forward. There's wickedness all around us. People with opinions, left, right and centre, on what we're doing, the way we're doing it, the words we're saying, where we might work, where we might not work, why we're not doing this and why we're not doing that. And everybody's got a mouth with an opinion and everybody thinks their opinion is just so amazing and wonderful. What do you think Facebook is for? It's for opinions. It's just madness. Yeah, chuck stuff on there and spread it out to the world, but oh, you could spend all day on Facebook and it's such a waste of time. You know, everything's such a waste of time. Don't you know that the dragon is furious with you? If you have been immersed in the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach, the dragon is enraged with you. And he will send everybody left, right and centre to try and take your eye off the goal. And the goal is love. Love! And trying to search out and find the lost sheep. Our lost brothers and sisters who are broken and bleeding and leprous, who don't know who they are. Where are you going to find them? In the circus? You know? In the religions? Yeah, some come out of religion, that's great. Some come out of the circus too, great. Where do you find most sick people? In a hospital. Where do you find broken, downtrodden people? In the world. That's where I work. That's where Lou works. That's where Chris and Victoria work. That's where Jason works. It's where all of us work, you know? So these are the people we're trying to reach. Lost 
sheep of Israel. So coming to the goal, brothers and sisters, love. It's all about love. Don't get carried away with all this madness and nonsense that's going on in the messianic realms. It's all madness. Chris said to me yesterday, he said, what did Yahushua do when Herod chopped the head off John the Baptist? His own cousin, Yohanan, the immerser. What did Yahushua do when, he, when Herod cut, the, cut his head off? How did he grieve? He went out and he healed thousands of people just to stick it in Satan's face. This is what I can do. You want, you know? So that's what we've got to do, brothers and sisters. We've got to just put it all behind us and go on and heal. Not in ourselves, but get get on with the you know, spreading the word, trying to let Yahushua's power and might and healing come through what we're doing and the ministries and gifts and talents that he's given us. Get into those. Because you can argue all day with people, particularly online, and they're not even interested. They're just put there. Scripture says some people are only there in your day to cause trouble. Some people can't sleep at night unless they do evil things. Taurus says that somewhere. So don't get distracted and sidetracked. Satan's wasting your time. You should be flowing, listening to Yahushua's voice. And he says, like he said to Luke, I'm always with you. Don't worry about all the, the, the crap. Don't worry about it. I'm always with you. So that's all I've got to say. I'm not going to crap on anymore. Dead words, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Brother Chris, for writing this. And we pray that it uh, is very powerful in the newspaper, spreads to hundreds of thousands of uh, homes in far north Queensland. So, brothers and sisters, shalom and stay strong. Keep your eyes on the ball. Keep your eyes on the game, the goal. And it's all about love. <laughs>